So I've only watched the first episode, so all of this stuff right here, I'm assuming it's probably like episode two or something like that. So I've only gone through with like part of the setup of the Fallout show, but for, for, for right now though, like it's pretty good. Like the first episode got me hooked. Like I care about the main characters, but the vault itself, I don't really see people caring for too much, especially that says after like the first episode, right? But for my first impressions of the show, spoiler free, I really like it. It got me hooked. I'm I'm like 100% in with fallout show i think it, it's awesome so far i agree okay i've only watched the first episode it does a really great job of world building through dialogue rather than trying to give you a ton of exposition which like a game like fallout can give to you but i think also going into the world as a novelty from the perspective of the vault person what's her name again vault lady 33 <laughs> i think it's the right way to go about doing it and i think also just having a game like fallout it's easier to translate over to like storytelling in a TV show compared to like a game like Halo, right? Which is so based on just like action and action, action and game gameplay and action. An RPG game like Fallout, it leaves us also opportunity to kind of branch out, putting you within the shoes of the vault person coming out into the world. Where like in Halo, you have very established characters, right? You have Johnson, you got Keys, you got Shaquille O'Neal again. Freaking YouTube ads, God damn it. <laughs> you, you know, like Master Chief is Master Chief, right? Captain Keys is Captain Keys. Johnson is Johnson. Like you have these very set characters within the world. And you definitely still have that within Fallout, but it's more like these characters are all aspects of uh, what people would do within the world of Fallout. Like the main character really of Fallout is the world, right? And you have all these different aspects of people. You think of kind of be, would be more like microcosms of what would happen with the nuclear Fallout within society. But like the main character is like the setting that you're in and so it gives you a lot more freedom of storytelling like yeah obviously you need to like have the ghouls look like ghouls the brotherhood of steel you know the vaults looking like a vault from the game and stuff like that so but it, i think it lends itself to be able to create new characters create new stories within the world and just kind of use that more as a template go about making a story your own way where compared to halo i feel like halo is a much more rigid form of like trying to bring to real life rather than a game like fallout where it gives you more leeway of to create these type of characters within the world Fallout's like a sandbox game right all bethesda all rpg bethesda games are effectively just giant sandboxes and you kind of just run in create your own storylines and uh, act the way you want to obviously within limitations of dialogue options but uh where it's like in halo you're like just retell the story of ce right Cause it's so good the original trilogy story is just so good that just you, you kind of have to tell that to really capture halo bethesda rpg games aren't really known for their story they're known for the world that you're in and to get lost in it go off side adventures do wacky things break the game and stuff like that like what, what fallout story is find your dad this is literally what you do it's basically the same it's the same story within the show as well but i think just because it just lends itself to more open-ended just wacky adventures you can just kind of go off and do random things like a show like fallout could just absolutely work like an old school show right where like each episode is its own contained story you go down your random story arcs and things like that right it can be like a like a csi miami show you know it can be uh, law and order if it wanted to be literally limitless potential when it comes to how you want to create a fallout show compared to a halo show you know what i mean like a show like fallout could honestly just keep going because there's always gonna be some random people doing some crazy stuff within the world to just get by and you can craft out some crazy stories around that that could be a big reason why a show like fallout is succeeding where a show like halo is struggling because a lot of the show creators don't want to be tied to just retelling a story they want to be able to have their own creative liberties because they're all creative people as well like obviously with like demographics in mind reminds me of walking dead just can keep going right yeah exactly like fallout could definitely be as a formula where like you can just keep going with it you don't have to be so stuck to a beginning middle and end obviously each episode needs to have that but you know because that's basic storytelling but i'm saying like it's it's a, the formula of fallout really could just kind of keep going because there's just such wacky stuff that happens such crazy things within the world such desperation as well like you could really kind of just keep the show going forever halo show is kind of failing not necessarily failing but just struggling i should say where the fallout show just came out with a bang and just kicking ass right now now, I was saying that mainly just because of the style of storytelling that those games had. 
where Fallout is much more open-ended and more about like the world you're, you're in. Come across these type of characters that are more extremes of like what the main character is. A show like Halo is really more like a very scripted, linear story that very much more gameplay focused, action focused. But that's the open world games have never been known for like the amazing gameplay. It's because of the world that you get put into and you just get lost in it. And you go down these crazy storylines that you wouldn't expect. You just take a left turn. You're like, hey, what's that over there? And you go check it out. Two hours later, you're in the middle of an insane conflict. Now saying how that's kind of a formula that could totally work with a show. And that's why I think Fallout's doing so well compared to a show like Halo. I think it's also mainly because like since like the, the main story arc of Bethesda open world games are so loosely tied together that I don't really find myself really getting invested with the storyline of the games, but more about the adventure of those games and those can and those games can be appreciated in a really casual level like you can just hop on but that's an open world game and have fun instantly within that hour and not feel like you're missing out on a whole lot of things or wondering really what's going on you really can just kind of jump in and have fun and that could be the reason why they had such huge success throughout the 2010s because you can play these rpg games at a casual level and not get lost within the story and get like overly complex like well who's who's this character why are they so important to me and stuff like that where it's like every character is very like gameplay focused from my experience or just me critiquing bgs games without really being like a diehard bgs fan you know but that's like that's my impression of playing the games crazy what happens when you follow the source material well the fallout show doesn't follow the source material they don't follow any of the games they take the elements of the games and then they make their own story around it. Fallout games lend themselves to more creative storytelling for the showrunners than the Halo show does. Since the Halo show is a crafted narrative that you go through, if it's like, you know, trying to recreate a book, you know, you basically just kind of follow that story. It's like kind of like we did with like the Harry Potter books and movies, right? Like the books, people always say are better than the movies, right? But the movies followed what the books did, right? For the most part, you know, they might have had some changes here and there, but for the most part, when you watch the movie, it's basically the books, right? That's because it's a crafted narrative that they ran through. Imagine if they just took the Harry Potter IP when they wanted to make the movies and use the books more as like a guideline to take these characters and then kind of do their own thing around that. It wouldn't feel like Harry Potter, right? Where in Fallout, you can get away with that because of Fallout's storytelling strategy of it being more of a sandbox type of game where you can just, it's way more open-ended and you can just kind of be more episodic with it like what's the main storyline of fallout 4 finding your dad or is it finding your kid i was trying to find your kid right uh, finding your dad's in fallout 3 and then fallout 4 is finding your kid if I remember correctly like real real loose out out outline there yeah, yeah they just changed up like what relative do you need to find with, with utilizing fallout as like the backdrop but you can still create original characters you can still create original stories that work within the world. And we've seen like this post apocalyptic uh, narrative done before within shows as well. So they, they stay true to the source material, but they don't retell it. And that's kind of what the issue was with Halo shows that they wanted to push that same kind of narrative, same style of trying to be true to the source material, but then tell their own story. But the difference with the Halo story that it's a crafted narrative that if you don't follow it, it doesn't make sense. <laughs> uh, I've always been fine with them going non-canon route with the Halo show. Personally, I feel if uh, we ever get like a one-to-one -one recreation, uh, it should be a case where you give us like a blur blank check. Again, that's another thing. I was like, for it being live action, I feel like it's a holdover from when the failed live action movie from the early 2000s and we just like kept trying to push like live action stuff live action halo is live action halo they what it was back in 2013 2014 back in 2014 when the halo show was first announced that's not too far removed from when the halo movie failed right when they wanted to do a live action halo movie and so then you just had like the set in stone that you want to do live action but then after seeing what like blur studios could do with like a cinematic animated version i feel like that would be the better way to go about making a Halo show would be like a cinematic animation rather than live action. Fallout, you can get away with live action because it's much more of a grittier kind of tone. And like, you know, they use a lot of like real life assets within the game itself to then put in this juxtaposition of like future 
but old materials and so then you can kind of get away with utilizing current tech that's on that round nowadays to physically recreate things where if you're trying to recreate a lot of stuff within halo you have to use cgi and also with like the legitimacy that we've seen through animation show animated shows get some more get more legitimacy over the years right even throughout the 2010s we saw that where like animated shows can be not just for kids they can be actual good shows the most recent example i would say would be like arcane on Netflix. That show was amazing. But back then, 2007 to 2014, having a show be animated would make it feel like it's for kids. Where now I think that connotation has been removed quite a bit. But even then with Clone Wars though, that show was definitely intended for ch younger audiences when it first came out. And a lot of people actually, when Clone Wars first was announced, people were upset with it for being animated and being like a kid show. And the first few seasons definitely felt much more tailored to a younger audience. It wasn't until like season four through seven, I think it was, or did they have eight seasons i can't remember exactly definite tonal shift with the clone wars in the later seasons that made it into a legitimate show that people were genuinely excited about and you can see the limitations that the halo show has by going live action you saw in season one people were just like there's so much dialogue there's no action because action scenes are incredibly hard to recreate in person and they're incredibly expensive and a lot of times you get like one shot to do it right where in animation it's up to your imagination how you want to craft it all out